Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Uh, let's let's go to the outline. So I will start give you some high-level motivation, including uh, some characterization challenge that our community is uh, facing now at millimeter wave. Then I will dive down in the specific problem of my talk, which is how to remove the bias dependency in the test fixture using a split TRL approach. Then I will give you some simulation results, measurement results, and, and then I will go into conclusion. Uh, in the last year, um, we see that a lot of uh, uh, the number of millimeter wave application is growing a lot. And that is enabled by the high speed technology that we are available in, on the market, which, is, which are CMOS, SIGI, GAN technology. So in order to, um, in order to facilitate the design process, we need to provide to the designer a good model of our device. And this uh, advanced model needs high accuracy in the measurement. Now we know that uh, in order to get the access to the uh, intrinsic device, we have to use a text feature. And text feature basically consists of probe pads and a transition to go from the top level to the DOT level. So if we have the, 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 the test feature, we, we have to remove from our measurement this test feature in order to get the intrinsic parameter of the, our DOT. So now there are two approaches uh, to debate uh, this test feature, two main approach. One is the lumped debating, uh, which use a lumped components in order to uh, describe the, the behavior of our test fixture. And on the other side, there is the uh, distributed calibration, which allow to have a directly the reference plane of our calibration to the DT level. Now, of course, each of those have uh, advantages and disadvantages. Let's try to uh, explain a bit. Uh, of course, the lumped embedding has high accuracy in low frequency, but actually require a first tier calibration. And more require multiple section if we want to have high accuracy in millimeter wave. On the other side, the distributed calibration uh, allow, as I said, allow to get uh, directly the reference plane to the DOT level, use a compact test fixture for the, uh, for in the millimeter wave, but actually if you want to measure it, low frequency needs to have a large structure. And in the last, so the test fixture is embedded in the calibration part, which is not a disadvantage per se, but in the case that I will show you in the next slide, uh, become a disadvantage. So since uh, the distributed calibration is recently introduced by our group, let's give you some information about the test feature that we need to uh, perform this calibration. So the test feature, test feature of course, has a PEDS as a transition to go from, top, um, uh, from the top metal to the duty metal, to the duty level, and then as uh, the line that is made at duty level, which is a capacitively loaded inverted CPW. And this line is basically made uh, with a line which has on top a, a, some stripe in order to increase the epsilon R of the medium and keep the field in the back end of the line, avoiding the lossy uh, substrate. So now we use this uh, line to build our uh, standard at, mid, at duty level. Uh, so now every 
uh, device needs to be protected against the electrostatic, electrostatic discharger events. Uh, and in order to, uh, to, to, to make this protection, we use a diode. Now we know that the diode has some parameter that depends of the voltage that we apply at this terminal. And in fact, if we just consider the junction capacitance of the diode, the ESD uh, protection diode will show this behavior, the capacitance will show this behavior versus the uh, voltage. Of course, we can see this uh, effect also in the measurement just to look at S1 of a line versus bias. And we see a clear uh, variation versus bias that is unfeasible, um, that is not, is not a, uh, something that we expect because uh, the line is a passive structure. That means that this uh, variation becomes from, uh, comes from an error from the calibration. Now, uh, since the TRL, when we perform the TRL calibration, since the TRL use a, as a standard the true reflect and the line, uh, we have to apply the same voltage at both ports. Usually it's zero, the voltage, is, there is no bias, but actually we can apply different bias uh, using an open as a reflect. Uh, but if we look at measurement scenario, usually we characterize our device uh, using a different bias uh, on port one and port two. But that means that the measurement scenario doesn't match the uh, calibration scenario. We cannot use a TRL, standard TRL as calibration. So our approach is to use a split TRL. We call it split TRL. Basically, uh, if we have a measurement scenario where we have V1 at port one and V2 at port two, we can actually uh, perform two different calibration, one using V1 and one using uh, V2 on the test fixture, uh, and of course using an open as reflect, and then combining the, the two error box related to the voltage that we have on the, on the port, we can actually match the measurement scenario. But actually now the question is, are we able to do this? So in order to answer this question, I will give you some mathematical consideration about the TRL. But let's first formalize the problem. So let's consider that we have two calibration. Calibration one, which, is, uh, um, which has the same voltage port one and port two, and calibration two that has V2 at port two and V1 at port two, uh, one. Uh, th which is uh, different from the calibration uh, one. Um, uh, I, I represent the, the, the voltage variation with putting a uh, perturbation block on port one. And uh, now our question is, the two error box at port two remains the same when we uh, in both this calibration, because if it's the case, actually we are allowed to change, to exchange the error box at port one. Uh, so, let's consider the mathematical uh, explanation. So, Consider calibration one where we have the, where we don't have any perturbation on port one, and let's write uh, the two error box, TA and TB, in terms of uh, um, T matrix and written uh, with S parameter. Now, from the TRL calibration, we have, we have uh, TA and TB in terms of uh, K, that which is a coefficient, and Rn, which is basically is possible to uh, demonstrate from the TRL uh, algorithm that, is a, that are independent matrix. And then we have the K, uh, 
the k uh, coefficient. Now, if we consider the case where we have a perturbation, uh, we can write at the same way also the perturbation, and then from the algorithm we get uh, the coefficient and the matrix. And if we see we uh, uh, we see k b, which is the one that we are interesting to see, we see that it's different from the previous one. But actually, if we look more carefully, we see that uh, the dependence from the perturbation is uh, comes from the transmission parameter of our uh, perturbation. That means that if we choose the, the perturbation, if we consider that the perturbation has the same transmission parameter, actually we can put out of the, uh, the square root and then we simplify with what we have on top and we get the same uh, coefficient that we get in the previous case. But that means that our perturbation should be representable with a uh, um, reciprocal component, which is the case of the ESD. So in order to prove this uh, approach, I made a 3DM simulation using a CST, um, and then I uh, uh, made a simple structure in with using a CPW where I put a lambda capacitor in the in the in the test fixture that represents the variation of our uh, ESD protection diode. Then of course I uh, performed two calibration, one at V1 and one at V2. V1 and V I call it here V1 and V2 but in the simulation will be represented uh, is, is basically I changed the capacitance here to represent the, the variation of the voltage. And then the duty using uh, V1 at port 1 and V2 at port 2. I performed the split TRL and basically I uh, get the results that I expected from the mathematical consideration. Basically the TRL shows, uh, the split TRL shows almost uh, zero error and the standard TRL, which is the calibration one, shows an error that increases with the frequency. Let's go in the measurement scenario. And first, let's take an overview of our uh, measurement scenario. We have the probe, we have the structure, and for, for the structure, we use a, uh, a, a structure made in CMOS 28 nanometer technology. And then we have the duty in the middle of the structure. Let's see a section of, the, of our structure. We have here the probe, the pads, the transition, and then we have the line to arrive to the reference plane. Under the transition, we have the, our ESD. Now, uh, we need to define the reference for our measurement. And of course, since we have to apply different voltage at port one and port two, the, the open will be the best candidate. And in fact, we take as reference the, uh, the open, but actually using uh, the calibration at the pads, because this calibration does depend from any variation uh, from the bias. I use uh, V1 1.5 at port one and V2 zero at port two. Now, if we go in the first step of our uh, measurement, um, we extract the uh, test fiction parameter using the um, uh, pad calibration and metal one calibration together at the two different voltage, V1 and V2. Then applying the split TRL approach, we actually measure the open uh, at the different voltage, V1 and V2, and then using the related uh, test fixture, we remove uh, them from the measurement and we get the measurement at the pads. Now, this measurement should match exactly the, the, the measurement that we get directly at the pad using the TRL 
the, the calibration at the pads. In fact, that is uh, what we see here in the, in the results. So here we see S11 and S22 of our uh, open measured at, uh, pads. And we see that the, using a split TRL, we get an excellent agreement with the, the reference measurement. And we clearly see an error if we use a standard TRL, which is the TRL made using zero voltage at port one and port two. We have to note that at S22 doesn't change uh, using different calibration because different method, because uh, on port two, we, we applied always zero uh, voltage. So we didn't change the voltage on port two. Uh, so let's go into conclusion. We introduce basically a, a problem of bias dependence in the error terms uh, when we use a, a direct duty level calibration, TRL calibration. We uh, uh, development speed TRL technique uh, and we show that if we use a um, uh, if, if, we, we, if our perturbation is considerable like a reciprocal component we can actually apply this technique and then we apply this technique in the case of where we have uh, a ESD dependency effect in, the in, the, in our uh, test fissure using a CMOS uh, technology in our device characterization. This research is supported by a Dutch technology foundation, which is a part of the Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research, and which is a partly funded by a Ministry of Economy Affairs. Thank you for the attention.